Beth, thanks, Steve. That, that was fantastic. It's hopefully a really good segue into uh, what we're doing now in terms of implementing B Corp and using that to take the big picture of sustainable development goals and translating that into business action. Um, hopefully, my IT is going to be working. I've got two laptops, one which is an old one, which is kind of quirky and failing, and this one hopefully will work. So I will give it a go and start to share my screen one second. Right. Hopefully, everybody can soon start to see my screen. And I will do a slideshow. OK, is that working for everyone? Yeah, yeah. Sounds good. Brilliant. great stuff. Right. So, yeah, I'm Scott James from uh, Wall Williams Associates. We're based down the Royal William Yard in Plymouth. Um, we've got about 140 staff across seven offices in the UK with a really strong southwest presence. And about three years ago, we started to look into B corporations and their role that they could play in terms of translating our ambitions and delivery and sustainability within our business in a really genuine way. And the idea being that um, there's a number of initiatives out there over, over the past times that have looked to implement sustainability. But this one really, we felt, was something which truly took the full uh, triple bottom line, the environmental, social and governance aspects of sustainability and gave it a really strong framework for putting in place within Walt Williams Associates. And the early kind of adopters in the Southwest were generally in the creative and cultural sector, but this we felt was uh, the way in which the world was going and was a, a universal standard across, across the globe, which could actually implement sustainability and be truly independent, uh, truly verifiable and recognized as a, as a framework for uh, a transparent and accountable business in terms of its sustainability credentials. So that's when we started to look at B Corp about three years ago um, uh, at, within the business overall. So why do businesses take this path? Well, it, it's about being part of a change and actually in line with how Steve was really describing, wanting to make a difference. It's about taking that big picture ambitions and, and putting in place within your business. But as well as the kind of the, the people, places, planet and profit aspects of um, B Corporation sustainability generally, in terms of your true business ambitions, it gives you a recognised um, platform for really attracting the best talent into your organisation. So people want to join you as a business. If there's a recruitment challenge and so on, it gives you a, a step above and a way of truly uh, recognising the good work that you do. Strengthening engagement, but that can also mean with your staff, but also with your clients. So obviously, it gives you a, a better kind of uh, platform for uh, showcasing what, you, what you're all about and potentially for some businesses about attracting investment as well. It builds that credibility around your organisation. What is it in terms of implementing that? Is a, is a rigorous assessment process that you go through um, uh, over time. And with B corporations, there's now over 5,000 globally. And I understand from the B Lab who run the uh, B Corporation process, that's quickly ramping up to 7,000 businesses across the, across the world. Some of those are really big names that you'll recognize. Ben and Jerry's, especially in this weather, everybody fancies a bit of Ben and Jerry's. They're clearly a very sustainable organization and they, they use B Corporation. Others like Innocent Drinks, um, perhaps Patagonia and Finisterre from the clothing sector and so on have gone down that route. And in the finance sector, those like Trialdus Bank, those that are ethically leading sustainable uh, businesses. In the southwest, in kind of Plymouth, Cornwall, Devon and up to Bristol, we're a real kind of hub of, of B corporations. It just says a lot about the southwest generally and our kind of eagerness to be uh, sustainable businesses. Uh, London is also a bit of a hotspot for, for growth in B corporations. Uh, and it's certainly in the UK, it's the fastest growing country in terms of take up of uh, B corporations uh, across the world. But what does it cover? Um, there uh, is, is five separate themes, and I mentioned about ESG and triple bottom line. Well, these five themes really start to cover the full breadth of delivering business, whatever kind of business you are. The governance and how you're structured, how you engage with people, how transparent you are and the ethics that you have, through to workers, which is a bit of an Americanism, but actually it's your staff, it's your team. How, you, how they are compensated, what's the disparity between the top and the kind of bottom of the structure in terms of financing, how open and transparent is that? And particularly from our side of things within the business uh, in our sector, training and education, how you take people from kind of school level engagement right through to retirement and everywhere in between and make sure they've got a good career path and are well supported throughout that, as well as areas like flexibility. 
the more general kind of sustainability areas you'd expect as well in terms of your community impact, how you make a difference out there in the locations that you're based in and, and work with the rest of society. And of course, the very critical bit around environmental impact, which I think over time, um, the sustainability agenda has been skewed towards environmental perspectives in terms of carbon impact and so on. Well, this is a kind of a broad area of which uh, environment is, is one key factor, but not the determining factor. And as Steve described in his excellent presentation, your impact in terms of procurement and working with your customers and staff and making sure that throughout your whole value chain that you work with, that everybody is, is doing business in the right way. So the B Corp process is entirely uh, uh, across the board uh, in that respect. Um, what the B Corp process has roughly out of 200 points, those five themes, if you say about 40 points per theme, it assesses you <clears throat> in quite great detail across that. And the, <coughs> pardon me, the required um, pass rate for, for B Corporation is 80. So 80 out of 200, with the idea being that you then move towards higher scores over time. Um, when we accredited two years ago, we were blown away by scoring 135.5, um, which at the time was the fourth highest in the UK um, of, all, of all businesses. And the breakdown beneath that shows where we scored highly uh, in, in particular. Um, in particular, for us, workers theme was particularly strong. So that's around our career development programs that we have in place for all staff. And that, that's aligned to what we do. So we're construction and development professionals of project management, quantity surveyors, building surveyors. And we have a very structured path of progression and training for, for our staff, um, which not, not all sectors have. So I think there's a quite a fortunate overlap there. Um, so we're, we're, we're really kind of uh, benefited from that. And we actually scored in the top 5% across the world uh, on, on the workers theme. The most important bit, though, isn't about the score. It's about what you do as a business and how you implement that. And we started to break that down by people, places and planet, a very similar theme to what Steve described. Of course, it's all underpinned by profit. You can't do any of this work without without the profit. But in terms of the people aspect of that, we're really focused on WWA Futures, which is working with schools and colleges to attract the best talent into uh, the business and into the sector generally. It might not just be our business. It might be others and offering a really structured apprenticeship program from the ages of kind of 18 onwards or post degree to make sure people can come into our sector and learn and get the best possible training. I mean, I'm really pleased actually, the image from the bottom left is uh, Craig and Tom doing an outreach piece of work um, in Mounts Bay Academy uh, to the year 10 group. And um, one of the team from that year 10 group, Ivy is actually joined the call today. She started work experience with us for this week. So. It's about working with Ivy and, and others to make sure that they can um, learn and get involved in the sector. More generally than that, though, um, an area which overlaps with a lot of the other themes and priorities for our business is hybrid working and the kind of the flexible working approach. So uh, something that's been trialled within our business, obviously, since COVID is the remote versus uh, in-office uh, approach, which a lot of businesses are doing. We've also taken that a step further this year with a trialing a nine day fortnight, which is really interesting because um, we're about three or four months into that and the results are really quite positive, very positive from a from a client impact perspective, from a staff well-being perspective and from a financial kind of turnover and profitability perspective. But of course, with a nine day fortnight, you're taking a day out of uh, a travel and commuting as well, potentially. So you're making directly an impact on the environmental credentials of your business as well. Under places, some of our priorities there around 1% for our communities. I mean, that's a minimum target. We tend to be quite a bit above that. And that's from a, a mixture of making sure that we do volunteering. We do a, a structured volunteering program for all our staff. We have a focused volunteering month in March each year aligned to the B Corp um, volunteering month. So things like beach cleans, the, uh, the painting in the bottom right there, the YMCA in Plymouth. Um, work with schools and so on, as I've said before, but also kind of uh, charitable giving and so on. A lot of businesses do, but it gives a structure to that. And the other area which we're looking to, to promote and improve uh, across our business more generally is biodiversity net gain, which is a, a really interesting area and something which our staff have been championing uh, across the business as well. So within our office in Truro, there's a, a, a wildflower growing program around our office environment whereby we can have uh, one square metre of new wildflower space for every member of staff across the business. 
which is in line with the Universities of Exeter's aim to get Devon and Cornwall to have one square metre of new wildflower space for every resident of the counties. Fantastic initiatives like that and how we can embed it into our business work. And then some really kind of meaty areas of focus for us around planet. So there's two areas that we focused on to embed uh, sustainability within the business, quite ones you'd expect, I'm sure. The carbon neutral action plan, so operationally as a business, how we assess our uh, current carbon baseline in 2019 um, at 95 tonnes of carbon emitted across scope one and two. We've grown that to look at scope three commuting as well. So we emit about 190 tonnes of carbon as a business. And we've got a plan for reducing that by over 60% by the end of this year uh, and then offsetting our remaining balance. The idea that by 2025 we'll be fully carbon neutral uh, and pushing that again as much as we can. But the particularly interesting point for, for projects and for clients is about carbon leadership. So we deliver cost and program advice to, to clients to make sure their projects are on track and their contracts are delivered as they'd expect. But an extra layer of that which we're focused on is carbon leadership, whereby you can look at the carbon impact of the development over time. So, for instance, box and outline stage, and concept stage of development right through to operations. And you can actually drive down those emissions through sensible design decisions. And we've been doing that working in partnership with other business businesses in Plymouth, particularly Stride to Ground and Hall Lee. And we're actually working with Plymouth City Council and trialling that on a number of projects uh, including Central Place. So that's an exciting area of growth. And the built environment sector in the UK has a disproportionately high impact on carbon, as you'd expect. Real estate is a particularly bad emitter. It's about 38% of carbon emissions in total. So by taking this type of initiative and with government policy catching up, hopefully in due course, that can start to make a great difference uh, on those emissions within the planet theme. And then as Steve was saying, the, the area around this really is about team engagement and how we can drive cultural change and behavioural change. And what we've done with the B Corp approach is have office leads across our seven offices to really have them driving the kind of future direction and initiatives that we've got. So the biodiversity programmes across our offices have come from those teams. Implementing carbon neutral kind of behavioural change is coming through those teams. And it's about having a two-way kind of governance approach to make sure that actually it's the 140 staff that are driving the future of the business, not the one or two perhaps that would traditionally be uh, at the top of a business doing that. So it's a great two-way approach of engaging staff across the across the whole breadth of the company. That was a real whistle-stop tour. So hopefully it kind of shows really where we've we've taken our SDGs, our UN Sustainable Development Goals. We've used B Corp as a framework, really, for implementing sustainability and for driving change within the business and for giving us a real structure. And our staff have started to take that on board with passion. So there's a number of ways in which you can implement sustainable business models. I would urge you to have a look at um, uh, B Corp as an opportunity, really, for, for doing that in, in a genuine way. There are also in um, Devon and Cornwall a, a B Corp club whereby all the B Corps come together to share best practice and you can really start to learn from that. So if you're at the stage like Steve of looking at B Corp, there's 101 businesses out there that can really start to help and guide you uh, to implement that uh, in, in earnest in your business. At the moment, there's probably a year's worth of from idea to gaining, gaining your accreditation. There's about a year's worth of time to, to go through, but it's, um, it's, it's time well spent and we're feeling the benefit of it.